So I mentioned that uh, we're going to go through each of our topics in, that we've done so far in physics and uh, look at them from a rotational perspective. Uh, so let's consider kinetic energy of a point mass moving in a circle. We know kinetic energy is one half mv squared. Uh, if it's moving in a circle, uh, we can this is, then this is a tangential velocity, uh, which means we can rewrite it. Tangential velocity is equal to our omega squared. So then we can then write its kinetic energy as mr squared omega squared. Uh, now this is for a single point mass. Uh, and this mr squared for a point mass is something called moment of inertia. So kinetic energy, a rotational kinetic energy, is equal to one half i omega squared. It's called moment of inertia. Uh, the unit, oh, I've got a place for the unit down below, so forget about that. A uh, moment of inertia describes how an object resists changes in rotation. A uh, moment of inertia is the rotational equivalent of mass. So let's get back to the first page. Our rotational equivalent of mass is I, moment of inertia. Uh, and as you can see, it's this mr squared. You can see that it's related to both how much mass is there and then the radius, where that mass is relative to the axis of rotation. So let's think about this. We've got two cubes, the same dimensions and same masses, but one is solid while the other is hollow, which is the greater moment of inertia. <clears throat> think about that for a second, see if you can come up with a, an answer and reasoning on your own. Maybe pause the video. Uh, so which has the greater moment of inertia? Well, it's going to be the hollow one. Moment of inertia is mr squared, so that the mass is the same. So what's important is the radius. The hollow cube, the hollow cube's mass is located on average. farther from its axis of rotation. Uh, so anytime you have uh, a hollow thing versus a solid thing, the hollow thing is a greater moment of inertia if it has the same mass, because that mass is located farther out uh, from the middle. Now, if they have the same material, the same dimensions, one is solid while the other is hollow, then the solid one will have the greater moment of inertia. Now, why? Well, consider what is a, a solid cube. The solid cube is a hollow cube. With, you can think of it as a hollow cube with extra mass inside it. So then the outer shell of the solid cube has the same moment of inertia as the hollow cube, but then extra mass fills it. Ah. So that, that gets to a principle uh, about moment of inertia. Just like with mass, if you have multiple objects in your system, you, the total mass of the system, you add them all up. Same thing is true for moment of inertia. Total moment of inertia, you add them all up. Uh, the unit of moment of inertia is a mass times a distance squared, kilogram, meter squared. Uh, page 314 in your book has moments of inertia of some common objects. So moment of inertia is mr squared for a point mass. Uh, for other objects, you get their total moment of inertia by adding up all the point masses, adding up the mr squareds for all the point masses in the object, uh, which is a calculus thing to, to do that. In, in physics C, we do derive these moments of inertia. Uh, and these are 
some common ones that we'll, we'll use. If you have a disc or a solid cylinder, uh, so that's like yeah, a solid cylinder rotating around, and all of these are around an axis through their, their middle unless otherwise stated. Uh, so it doesn't matter if it's flat or if it's thick, uh, as long if you have mass located in a circle around the axis of rotation and that's that solid, then the moment of inertia of that is one half m r squared. That's the, av the basically that means that the average position of the mass is, is uh, it's a description of how far away the average position of the mass is located. Uh, a hoop or hollow cylinder, so if you just have a ring shape where there's only mass around the outside, that has a moment of inertia of mr squared. It's basically like a point mass. All the mass is located a distance r away from the center. Uh, a solid sphere is two-fifths mass times the radius of the sphere squared. That sphere is hollow. That's two-thirds mr squared. Uh, a rod axis through the middle, so if it's something that's you know, something long and skinny, and we're rotating it right through the middle. Uh, the moment of inertia of that is one twelfth m l squared, uh, and if you have a rod rotated around an axis through its end, that's one third m l squared. And then notice that this is for everything else it's radius, but for the rod it's l, the full length of the rod. And then I mentioned that the total moment of inertia, so if you had a, I don't know, say you had a, a rod and a sphere, or a rod and a cylinder that were oriented, so you got your cylinder and then your rod sitting like here on a solid cylinder, and you got an axis right through the middle, you just take half mr squared plus 1 12th ml squared to figure out the total moment of inertia of all the stuff. A moment of inertia is dependent on the axis, uh, so if I have a, you know, say I have a sphere rotating through the middle, I would use the formula. If I've got a sphere and we have our axis of rotation on the outside, so it's kind of rotating around that point, uh, then it, it has a different moment of inertia. Uh, and this is what's called the parallel axis theorem. And again, in physics C, we derive this. Uh, but if you take the moment of inertia about the center of mass, and you add mass times distance squared. So say I wanted to find the moment of inertia of this sphere about this point, then I just, this is distance d, I just add mass times d squared, and that gets it. Um, I don't think you need to know this for the AP test, but we're going to use it in a lab, which is why I decided to, to give that to you. So, a globe consists of a hollow spherical shell of mass m and radius r, supported by a rod that runs from the north pole to the south pole that has mass 2m. Now, what's the moment of inertia of the globe about an axis that is the diameter of the globe running between two points on the equator? So we've got globe and a rod running from north pole to south pole. And then the question is, what's the moment of inertia if we rotate it around this? So we start spinning it. If we were to start spinning it this way, uh, what would its moment of inertia be? Well, hollow sphere. So we look for our globe. We've got a hollow sphere. We look back at our formulas. That's two thirds mr squared. And then we've got a rod with an axis through the middle. So the rod axis through middle is one twelfth ml squared. So we just add those together, 1 12th, but let's see, the rod has mass 2m, and L, well, if it runs from the north pole to the south pole, then the length of the rod is two times the radius of the globe. And then we can calculate that just by doing some fraction addition. So both of these have an mr squared, and that's 2 thirds plus, what is this, 1 12th times 2 is 1 sixth, times 4, 4 sixths is 2 thirds again. Oh, how about that? That was actually not intentional. Uh, so the total moment of inertia of this collection is 4 thirds mr squared around that particular axis. You know, this which has a greater moment of inertia, solid sphere rotated around the middle or rotated around the edge. Well, I already explained the parallel axis theorem, so you can get it from that. But even in terms of just, uh, you know, 
regular reasoning, uh, if you move this axis of rotation away from the center, then now the mass on average is going to be farther away from that axis of rotation. Uh, so it has a greater moment of inertia around the edge because the mass is on average farther from the axis of rotation.